Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. And today we have a new mail call project. And uh, uh, this is kind of uh, nothing more than we're going to be able to handle right here as far as the project goes. And, um, and I'm going to read you the letter that came in with the project here. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Fenner, here is a project uh, for your examination that I sincerely hope you will accept. Uh, this shaft comes from a bench model drill press that Miss Nancy Thomas at MSC tells me has long since been discontinued. I'm concerned about the poor conditioner. I'm concerned about the poor condition of the Morris taper. What may I please know would you recommend? Having watched your videos and read the comments, I'm thoroughly convinced that you are the most knowledgeable, dedicated, and skillful artist in the metal it has ever been my privilege to know. I hope you will accept my job, not only because uh, it will be the best possible, but also because I would be honored to have an example of your handiwork among my tools. Um, John Cosette. Uh, John, uh, thanks for the comment and uh, uh, the compliment as well. Um, Let's see what you got here, all right? So, basically, uh, you wanted uh, poor condition on the Morris taper. I've actually brought the shaft out, <coughs> and uh, I set it up on uh, a pair of V-blocks uh, because I want to check for run out, and the reason why I'm not using my regular trunnion action rollers, which are my favorite, uh, the diameter for those is three quarters or larger, and this is like 670 or so on the diameter here so it's a little small to fit in there so but uh, you know there's several ways to check this and uh, and I'm going to show a couple different ways here because I just want to cover a couple different um, aspects of, of kind of a couple of inspection uh, um, techniques and stuff not that it's high-tech uh, inspections just general purpose inspections on something that you might pull off the lathe or whatever just, or a drill press just like this. Now I want two bearing points here, zero, zero, and those are on the V-blocks and anytime you've got V-blocks, rollers or whatever the points of contact are zero. Everything else is gauged in relationship to those two zeros. Um, so I got this indicator set up over here. I put the indicator and the plunger just off center on this side here so that when it rolls over the spline lifts that roller and then each time it comes to the top of the spline you can compare the tops all the way around if this is uniform this is not chewed up and these are all standard um, shapes that are uniform meaning they're not damaged you can do it this way and you can check the run out at the splined end of this all right, so as we roll this over and we're checking the run out here, we find that each one of those tops comes up and we're within a thousandth of an inch all the way around. All right, so we got, we're within one there, we're zero there, we're zero there, and now we want to check this taper at the end. Now, when you're checking a taper, you got to make sure that you thrust against one side or something that keeps the constant um, shaft alignment so that you don't drift up and down and when you pull this indicator over here all right and see if you slid this in and out so your indicator goes up and down okay so if you just hold it against the back and then rotate it around You'll see the that needle doesn't hardly even move. I, it's pretty hard to see that move. It might be moving maybe a half a tenth, but yet you push it in and out. Now that we know the shaft is running true, now we're going to focus in on the surface condition of the taper. And I know John stated uh, it was a Morris taper, but this is actually called a Jacobs taper, and the size of this particular taper is a Jacobs number six taper. And uh, and I have uh, a, a Morris taper number two here and Jacobs taper here and this is an arbor to run a standard drill chuck. I clamped this in the vise here and I put a pair of my uh, 
Jacob's wedges or chuck wedges, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're made for knocking loose your your um, drill chucks. And uh, and I was able to get this apart because I wanted one to compare the dimensions of this spindle and the dimensions of this and also compare them to what's in the book. And in the book here it's got a page on spindles and drives and this is American Standard threaded and tapered spindles for portable air and, and electric tools. Um, and then there's a taper spindle and Jacobs and it gives you all the dimensions in here and here's a picture of the page there and then I'll show you the line here uh, where Jacob 6 and you can read all the way across and then with the charts there it kind of gives you the dimensions. Now all the information really is in there uh, stating the dimension uh, of this taper and after looking at that and taking and measuring the minor and the major and comparing those to the chart this taper is right on the money now there are a couple blends in on this and uh, I see a scratch or a score there there's two little digits right in there there's a little blem right down there I see a little tiny scratch right there as I roll it over okay there is one little noogie right up at the top there it's at the top now all right as we roll it over there's a there's a scar score there and one little noogie up there okay now other than that this looks like virgin material right here and it looks like the natural grind you know besides those marks this taper looks very good in shape something hasn't really spun and scored the whole thing all the way around so what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick touch up here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove anything that's high sitting on all those spots there with a stone and we're just going to use we're just going to use a an old worn out triangle stone that I have here just because I know that it's going to be able to just take those high spots off. So we're going to massage. You can add oil if you have to or you want to. But we're just kind of pinpointing those. We're trying to stone off any highs raised right next to the smash of the digit. It's pretty good. It wasn't real radical. I just thought we'll just touch that up. All right. Now we're going to do a blue contact on it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint. Paint this with our sharp sharpie dicum. here a little bit so we uh, we know that we're covering this now this is this is pretty good shape in here it's not let's see if we can get any picture in here at all well catch some of the light 
it's a pretty good center. This thing has been on here for a long time. You can see that the jaws are they're kind of worn and wiped. It's not the best shaped chuck. Okay. Now, but the the taper that matches here. Okay, now we pull it off. And we can see. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to roll this over and you can see right there, the major diameter, you can see a ring all the way around. And then you can see that it's heavier up here, but it gets lighter and lighter, which is good. All taper fits should fit a little tighter at the top end than they do at the bottom end. Uh, and just because usually the, the material on the hub is thinner uh, at the top than it is at the bottom and most of the time it expands because of the wall thickness if we were talking about this relationship here if it was a hub like a propeller hub this is all beef here and, and uh, but you're not really hitting any high shiny spots I might be holding it off there I do see a little little tiny shiny spot right next to that score right there so I'm going to stone on that one a little bit okay yeah, just a skosh on that one We're not even up here where those two dings were up at the top there. See that one right there? That one right there. Alright. Now we'll go ahead and we're just going to take them. We're going to put a little Sharpie back on those two areas right there. Alright, let's check our fit again. And we're just rotating it around. None there now. Ever so slightly on this one here, we still have a little bit more, so let's take that. All right, now we'll just go ahead and Sharpie on there. Okay, no raised area there. No raised area there. And now that we've done that, look how uniform the wipe off is up here and even concentrated down here. Alright, I think you can get a brand new taper to fit really nice on this shaft. And there should be no reason that this wouldn't give you a nice straight running drill uh, with a brand new chuck. Okay, um, So I'm going to go ahead and, and wipe and clean that off of there. But I'm going to show you a couple other things that while you're chucking your shaft, what is important and what's not important. Okay, I do want to recap just a little bit here that we did check this dimensions out for this taper and you, you really want to watch or look in the machinist handbook for a lot of the things that you can inspect on your machines and uh, splines, gears, tapers, uh, you know, those, that's why you have the Bible is there's a lot of information in there and you can look it right up and you can check dimensionally exactly what it is and you can see how far out of tolerance it is. Alright, or how well intact it still is in this case. Alright, so just kind of, you know, touching bases of another tool to give you a lot of inspection information while you're digging through dismantling your tools and your equipment and rebuilding them and machinist handbook
It's got a lot of good information in there and keeps you on a straight line. We we had this turned and we were using center to center on an arbor holding a brake drum for a bike there uh, on our last job that we were playing with. And this setup is still here. Now, I want to show you because we use the V blocks to run this, but you can also check one out in the late. Your centers, and actually I was questionable whether these centers were really good. Uh, it, so, there is a little bit of uh, ugly centerness to this on each side here. And of course, um, de depending on which way you're going to put it, it doesn't have to have lube on both sides. It only really needs to have lube for the solid one. And I'm not going to be rotating this except for by hand. So anyway, I just put this in here. And... We put this side over here. And then we just crank it in to where we got just that feel of being able to spin it with no end play. Alright, now we can spin the shaft and check our run out. So we can check the splines here. We can check our bearings and we can check that in relationship to the two ends. Now the two ends are zero. Everything else is going to be related to those two zeros. Okay. Sometimes having this back, having this tilted up and then down and then you can roll this, roll this in to where you can get your reading. Okay, we're loaded on the indicator now. Now we just rotate it by hand and that's fluctuating. less than a quarter thousands. Each one of those lines is a half a thousands and it's just fluttering right there. Alright, now we'll check this diameter here. We've got it loaded. I'm just going to go ahead and put my zero over here somewhere like that so I can crank it into it. I can live without being on a zero, I'll just compare it from line to line. Alright, that is going just a little bit above zero, a little bit below, not exceeding a line. So I'd say that was within a half a thousandth. Same thing here, bring it into a zero. Alright, rotating it. Same thing. About a half a thousandth. Okay, now here, I'm not going to worry about zero. I'm going to worry about it just picking up. Okay, we crank it in. Till... Same thing. We're just comparing lines. Okay, I'm going to shoot for that 5 right there. Okay. Each time it comes up on top of that, it is almost right on a line of 5. Alright, so what was giving us the reading here when we were zero here and here is basically mirroring the image and we're zero at each end there and we're getting our half a thousandth fluctuation in here. All right. Now we've proved that you can measure the thing for trueness in two different setups. Now I also want to show you something that doesn't matter. There's a between this bearing and this bearing here. They come in here and they give us an undercut. And of course when I spin it here I can see I can see the machine cut where it starts. I can see it wobbling. That's a good indication that it's not true when they split it. Somehow they they the rough cut is distorted from that Spanish grind and everything. So I'll go ahead and bring this down here and we're just gonna see how much this runs out. There's our zero. I'm gonna back it back to zero. Okay, six thousandths that's running out right there. But it's not relevant to the operation of the spindle. It's clearance between here and there. It doesn't make a difference. 
Now this in here, excuse me, I'm going to bring this to zero. Four and a half to five thousandths at this end. So it's not consistent from here to here and it's not the same. It's a, it's a thou less or so over here. Alright, so I just kind of wanted to point this out that if you do have a run out in the middle and it's not on an important diameter or a diameter that matters. Bearing diameter, spline, taper. Those are what count. This diameter in here does not matter. Alright. Alright John, I think we're all set on the shaft here. I showed you a couple different ways to go about checking the uh, run out. Uh, what's important, what's not important. I've got a chance to show you uh, what I did find on the little blems there, how to take care of them. Uh, you got a good fit on here now. Dimensionally it works good. Remember guys uh, and gals, Machinist Handbook has got all this useful information in here. Um, right at your fingertips. Um, you know, when you ask, flip back here to the index. Ask your index. And it'll tell you what page it is. Um, Alright, I, uh, I think it's satisfied with this and you can put this back together in your, uh, your drill press. Um, I would throw new bearings in it just because you got it apart and you know they're probably a couple bucks each. Uh, throw on a new drill truck. You know, if you don't have one already, um, go ahead and throw a new one on there. I mean, there's, there's plenty out there. Uh, what I suggest, what, whatever kind you get, whether it be keyless or um, a, a Jacobs or a key chuck, um, go ahead and warm it up a couple hundred degrees in your wife's oven or on the wood stove just so that you know you're going hot potato, hot potato, hot potato and then go ahead and assemble it okay when that shrinks down on there you are never gonna have it come loose and now that you know that this is 100% clean and your new chuck will be really clean I would do the, 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 the light check just to check your fit just like I, I'm, I'm gonna leave this bluing right on here so that you can see how it went in this Jacobs here and you can see the remnants there and then you can wipe it off and you can see the little stone marks where I took the high spots off of uh, your little digits that are in there um, other than that it's good to go uh, no bill on this um, just log on to my website up in the right hand corner is sponsorships throw a couple bucks in my sponsor for me alright catch you later get her done